Before we get started, I got a sticker shout out to Chad over there at Resin Rescued Woods. Chad is a local builder here. He buys table legs from me, and uh, he's a real nice guy. I'll leave links to his social media presences in doobly doo below. Well, a lot of you folks know that I make table legs on the side, and one of the most labor-intensive things about making table legs is drilling holes. This stack of plates here, these are the mounting plates for the legs, uh, represents 116 holes that I had to drill. It takes six seconds to actually drill the hole, and uh, that took me nearly an hour to drill this stack of plates. That's an unacceptable use of my time, so after I batch out this bunch of legs here, we're going to make a hand punch, and that'll be today's project. And there the legs are, so let's get on to the punch project. Now, I've actually been collecting parts for this project for quite some time. Uh, one of the things I'm going to use is this is a linear bearing, uh, the same kind you'd find on a CNC router, and, and this uh, track rides inside it. And I'm going to mount the linear bearing to a framework that I'll build and this track will hold this punch die. Now you never know what you're going to get on this channel so if you click that notification bell you'll be among the first to find out what this week's project is. So one of the first things I want to do is create a CAD model so I have an idea of what I want to build. I know I want a, a mounting perch for the bearing I want a base, I want a tower. We can go to McMaster Car and import the CAD model of the bearing and bring it into our model to give us a better idea of what this thing's supposed to look like. We're also going to need to punch a couple of holes in it and create a couple of uh, fulcrum rods that we can uh, pry against with whatever kind of lever we come up with. And ultimately, uh, we will also have to put a hole in the base so you have a place for the punched out piece to drop. Okay, moving right along, I think we'll make the mount for the bearing. Now, it does not really need to be all that strong because the bearing is not going to do anything except guide the ram. And the ram is where all the uh, magic happens and all the force is applied. Now the question is how to get the hole pattern off the bearing and onto the steel. Now one thing I want to show you guys is I got these pieces of tape in here. Now take a look here. This, there's a little plastic thing in there and that plastic thing is holding the bearings in place. If you let that plastic thing slide out, all the bearings will fall out of this thing and then uh, you'd have a problem. When you transition from the plastic keeper to the rail, you've got to push the rail through to push that thing out. Uh, but in the meantime, keep that plastic keeper in place or it'll fall out and you'll lose your balls. Now the question is, how do we get the bolt pattern off the bearing onto the metal? And we'll just hold a piece of paper here and come in with a pencil. There you go. And the, the holes will make themselves known. It's kind of hard to tell on camera, but I can see where the holes are. So I went to the steel yard with the vision of my CAD model in my mind, but one of the first things that occurred to me is in the CAD model, the ram is right next to the upright tower, and that's not any good. Because that would have meant that the hole could only be like an inch from the edge of the metal I'm punching. And I want a little more range than that. So here I have a piece of half by three inch bar, and I think what I'm going to do is put the tower over here at one end. That way when I pull on it with a lever, it, it can just sit on a bench and maybe not even need to be clamped down. Now as far as my tower goes, I think I'm going to just uh, weld it at an angle. I'll cut some 45 degree angles on it and uh, we'll weld the tower here on one end. That way I get uh, three or four inches that I can go into the middle of the plate. And here I've made this mounting plate for the bearing and we'll just weld it onto the tower. I'm jumping around a little bit on the progress here. Before I start welding, I want to make sure I have the, the punch holder uh, made. So what I've done here is I've enlarged the holes of these washers, one to fit the uh, little neck down area of the punch, and the other one to fit the major area of the punch. And then I've drilled three holes in here. I'm going to tap threads into them, and 
these washers are going to sandwich the punch into place and hold it. So here's my mounting situation. I think we'll just weld that onto the end of the rail because there will be no side to side play of any kind. It doesn't need to be very strong because all the force will be straight up and down. You see that's looking a little bit off. Apparently welding that in pulled it down. So we're going to have to grind that a little bit. Now we can align the punch to the die and we do that by installing the linear bearing onto the framework here. This is still fairly warm but I'm anxious to get, get this thing working. Now I made this for another project but it just happens to fit the, the die so I'm going to use it. Now this is a Scotchman punch and die set and the way they said to align it is to just uh, put, install the punch and put it all the way down into the die and that's about all you have to do. So it's aligned now, I'm just going to go ahead and tack weld this clamp into place and then we'll get on to building the lever. Okay so off camera I made these linkage bars, drilled a hole in the tower there bolt this together. So this half inch by one inch solid steel bar should be tough enough to withstand the forces that this thing is going to generate. We'll start by drilling a hole in the end of it and then we'll mount it up and see what kind of range we get out of it. Determine how long it needs to be, how short it could be. Okay so I measured the travel and it turns out we need one inch of travel on this and that makes this rod too long. I took it to the bandsaw and this is some hard stuff. So I'm going to chop it off with the abrasive cutting wheel. Then we'll put it back together and see how we can interface to the rod. Now what I was originally going to do is, is make another link to connect this bar to the uh, rail. And uh, I was just going to let it touch. And the link would just hold it in place so when you lift the bar it lifts the rail. But I just discovered that not only can I not cut this, I can't drill it either. So I'm going to have to make an interface using this, this hole down here. I'll still come up and tie into these. Now if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw the new headlight mount that I built on for my bike. And uh, that's the same technique we're going to use to make this mount. Okay, so I bent this a little bit. Now I'm going to cut a little relief hole in there and bend it some more. Okay. Uh, that didn't work. That didn't work. One more try. Alright, here's what I came up with. And uh, what we're going to do now is I'm just going to put my Sharpie above the hole that I have drilled in there. And then I'm going to sweep this through its range of motion. And that's going to give me an arc that I'm going to need to cut out of that. And we'll put screws through there and be done. Okay, so it's mostly together and it's looking pretty good. Yeah, I think that's going to work. we got to get some spacers in there and screw the, the ram to the lever. Okay, well the camera battery died when I was getting those screws in, but look at that. That, that works. That just totally works. 
We'll, we'll start with this thin stuff. Okay, I'm gonna have to clamp it down, which is actually not that big a deal. Okay, here goes. Wow. Well, it only put a dimple in it. But have a good look at that. That that is looking that is looking good. This is going to need some work. What I'm going to have to do is add a level of gear reduction to the lever, and I know how to do that, but it's going to take a little bit of time. One thing I just thought of is if I just move the fulcrum point back a couple inches and drill a new hole and tap it, that would probably work. And I don't think it needs to be threaded either. Okay, so I drilled it for a 332nd inch roll pin, and I and I put the fulcrum point a couple inches back. Let's see if we can get this roll pin in. All right. It punched a hole. It was really hard to do. And I don't like the way it bottomed out. Let's see if we can punch a hole in something bigger. That was 16 gauge, this is 8th inch. 8th inch is what I drill the most. And we're back to just, just getting a dimple. So I thought I was going to be able to pull it off at the last minute. Oh well. Anyway, so I'll finish this up in next week's video and show you how the gear reduction system works. It's Labor Day weekend here in the States and I'll be going out to uh, Fremont Park here in Sacramento for an event called Chalk It Up. It's my 20th year as an artist there, and if you happen to be in the area this Labor Day weekend, 2019, uh, feel free to stop in. I'll be either in the beer garden or on spaces 121 and 122 doing my sidewalk chalk art. I'm happy to take any of your suggestions or answer any questions in the doobly-doo below, so please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.